All right, that was a big stack. Silly boy. Silly, silly boy. Here's the bike. Oh, dear me, Rod. Talked yourself into that one. Didn't get quite enough run up and then tried to leap it. Ah, oh dear. Arms are still working, legs are still working. I'm going to have some sore hips, oh, sorry, some sore ribs though. Well, that was a ripper stack. Wow. Got to improve my jumping. <laughs> Look at the, uh, when my helmet hit the ground. It's taken off a bit of paint. Snapped off where the uh, GoPro that I'm holding went. Broke a few things on the bike. These um, bark busters, that's taken a bit of a hit. It's a good thing there, nice and cheap. Everything else looks pretty good. Breaking a little bit more of my light. Could have been worse. Oh, gonna be a little bit sore tomorrow. <laughs> Thank goodness I was wearing all the protective gear. I think I've taken off some skin under here because it's a bit sore. All right, start heading back home. So we've made it to race day. It's a gorgeous day, so there's no excuses. A few people were surprised by me wanting to enter a hard enduro event, considering I'm a Johnny come lately to the sport. But I thought, why not put my 49 year old body through a little bit of pain, a lot of fun, and just see how I go. I'm not trying to impress anyone. I just enjoy a challenge. Alright, so here we go. I'll share my plan with you for the race. Don't kill myself. That's it. Keep it simple. There's always a bit of bedlam at the start of a race with everyone sort of... Well, everyone's much closer together. My plan is to not run into anyone. Not ruin anyone else's race. Just keep my nose clean. Of course, I haven't seen the track, so I don't know what's ahead of me. I'm hoping it's not too difficult that I'm going to make a fool of myself. I soon feel a little more relaxed when I observe some of the log jumping styles in front of me. I'm not so good at getting over logs. And I'm not at all concerned when people fly past me like that guy just did. I have to remove the ego and just cruise. You can't win a race in the first lap, but you can certainly lose it. I must apologize for the camera angle. I didn't quite get the chest mount angle right.
Never mind. It doesn't look too bad when I'm sitting down. Unfortunately, I spend most of the race standing up. Hang on a second, isn't that that guy that flew past me at the start? I've already got a position back. Clearly I've psyched him out. Alright, so I started to get a little nervous here because we had some logs and some tyres all mingled together. But, I got through. Huge sigh of relief. We're just about to enter a little bit of a cross enduro section. Something has to be said for when a rider in front of you gets stuck on a log, there's this psychological thing that goes on in your head where you go, ooh, this log must be a little harder than I thought. And then you start to overthink it. In situations like this, I'm happy to sit back, let other people go around me. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not trying to win. Although. I always think it's funny when people go around me and then they make a bit of a meal of the log. This log's not a difficult log. People watching, people watching, concentrate. There's a couple of logs that are reasonably close together. That, oh, you know what I was talking about being psyched out, what the people do in front? It's alright, we can do this. We've got it. And there we go. We are through. Some might call taking that line cheating. Sometimes you just gotta take what's presented and make the most of it. If you look carefully to the left, you can actually see an old mine shaft. Wouldn't want to fall down there. This was an interesting spot of the first lap. There was a guy standing on the crest of a very steep uphill and downhill. Obviously a few people had taken it a bit quick and come to a bit of mischief so he thought he'd take it upon himself to warn everyone. It's a good thing he did, I can see why he was there.
we are approaching the first tricky little hill climb it's not a long hill climb but it's fairly rutted out and it's made even more difficult if you've got four or five bikes stuck on the hill at different angles and positions I'm feeling fairly confident because I've been doing a fair bit of hill climbing practice Alright, it's our turn. Make way, fellas, coming through. Alright, that's one position, two position gains. Three, four, five. Five positions on one hill. Maybe I am in to win this thing. Don't get too far ahead of yourself, Rodney. See the little GPS unit on my handlebars, everyone was given a GPS route to take. At this point I realised I was not following the GPS route. Not only that, but there were about three or four guys behind me not following it. When I did the second lap I figured out why they actually put some bunting up. After a minute or so, having a bit of a look around, did figure out what was going on, saw a track and uh, jumped on it which went downhill and then we were back in the race. little test in fact it got harder as the day went on the track turned into bull dust and uh, it took a lot of commitment and it was difficult too when people were stopped in front of you and you lost momentum sure why that guy went that way but perhaps he was an official but I had the confidence to follow my nose and also the route that they'd supplied me. I'm pretty clever. What happened to the confidence Rod? There's a blue arrow. Follow it. You're wasting valuable time. That's right, we're still not in to win it. fairly settled into the race and absolutely loving the track it was right up my alley nothing had been too difficult up until this point everything had felt good I felt good, the weather was great it was a good day to be alive and then I saw a group of riders couldn't quite work out what was going on, then saw that guy try and get over the big log and thought, holy hell, how the hell am I going to get over that? I started to think about it, I thought, I could give it a go. 
And then I watched this guy in front of me. He did it with ease. Oh no, that's not so bad. And then I saw that guy dump it. It's good to see that there's people there that help you. At this point I was still thinking, I could give it a go. Then I watched the guy in the yellow. And I changed my mind. Where's plan B? Ah, there's plan B. Go under the log. It's got my name written all over it. This part took some time, so let's save you the hassle. Let's fast forward. Well, doesn't this look like fun? If only I'd spent more hours learning how to get over big logs, then I wouldn't be waiting here to drag my bike under this fallen tree. Mental note, practice log jumping. This was a relentless hill climb. Tree roots everywhere, but it was fun. Plenty of room to manoeuvre. And that guy over on the left seems to have found a better line, one through the trees. Might not be that good because I just overtook him. Really, at the end of the day, getting up these is just all about momentum, commitment, and looking further ahead than your front wheel. There were a few signs that maybe I was getting a little tired, like my front wheel sliding on a really basic corner, my first down for the day. Don't worry, it won't be the last. Hang on a second, am I going the right way? How come there doesn't seem to be too many tracks just here? Would I be leading the race? Is that possible? Oh my god, this would be a Cinderella story. First hard enduro event, and I come out and win it. Now settle down, Roger, you're getting ahead of yourself again. Five times I went past this log, and four times I went the exact same route I just did then. Instead of going straight over it, I thought we went around to the right. Slow learner, yes. I know you've heard it all before how we bang on about how the camera, particularly the action cameras, make the hills look like there's nothing there at all. But it's true. It doesn't do it justice. That hill there was actually quite steep. It took a great deal of skill to get up that hill. And yet, it just doesn't show it on the camera.
Alright, so here it is. Up until this point, everything had been hunky-dory. And then, they threw in this devilish little, is that the right word? Devilish? Threw in this devilish little downhill that had off-camber logs like this. It was a freezing morning, so they still had freaking ice on them. So any part of your bike or your body just hits it, just slips. Anyway, this is when the hard enduro actually started. I'm not sure how they did it, but they even managed to booby trap some of this track by stick. Oh, see, like that little stick that just Ooh. couldn't even see it. It just stuck itself out behind the tree right into my arm, went through my jersey, went through my armor and my skins underneath. Not happy. Had a bruise there for two weeks. See, I told you it was slippery. Didn't even see that log. Cunning little buggers. I pick my bike up, go to start it, and uh-oh, nothing. Oh, this is what you want in the middle of a race. Your bike loses power. Now, thankfully, this is not the first time this had happened with my bike. Occasionally I just wiggle the uh, wires around behind the front light and it all comes good. So that's what I'm attempting to do right now. But in this case, it wasn't the wires. I could wiggle them around for as long as I wanted. It ended up being a fuse. Now because this has been a recurring issue, I do have a nice stash of fuses in my backpack. Yeah, blown a fuse. Uh -huh. Master mechanic at your service. No, that was just a bit of luck, to be completely honest. But now we're back in the race. As I'm putting the bike back together, getting Sorry? ready to get back in the race, yeah. a fellow rider pulled past and said, You okay? I said, Yeah, just blown a fuse. And he said, Oh, mate, you got any tools? I said, Yeah, sure. This is what hard enduro riders do. We're very conscientious people. Help each other out. What do you need? We're in it together. To finish it together. Now hurry up, fix your bike, and give me my tools back because I'm going to win this thing. Shortcut. Oh, I don't know where I went. <laughs> it's a, somewhere here. Keep going, you'll be right. <laughs> See my yellow towel? I wondered where that went. It's good how the video reveals your stupidity. I forgot to put it in behind my front light. It's nice and yellow. 
managed to go back past it four more times and didn't pick it up. Thought it was someone else's. See that smoke coming from the front of my bike? It revealed the reason I blew my fuse. The wiring for a horn, which I didn't have, had actually somehow shorted itself out and overheated, melted. And anyway, after the race, I was able to fix it, fix a few other little things in that area, and I haven't had a problem with blowing fuses since. This would be the perfect time to show you how not to get over a log. While it's fairly steep coming into this log, what you don't do is jam your front wheel underneath it, which then makes it almost impossible to get any leverage, and then you have to rely on other riders to come and help you get it out. Nice work, Rodney. Hey, help you, you help me. Okay. I just need to get it back from the log and then I'll be right. Yeah, sure you will. You'll be able to just impress the hell out of everyone with your log hopping skills. You do that. Pull it back from the log and then just show everyone how good you are getting over the logs. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you with the details, but after a bit of toing and froing, we finally got the front wheel out, and I was able to just impress the hell out of everyone with my ability to get the front wheel over the front. Just watch this. This is spectacular stuff. People will write manuals on this technique. So what you can't see is I've successfully wedged my front wheel in between two logs now yes I know it takes some special special skill to do that sort of thing imagine if this guy hadn't have come along I would have been stuffed so I'd created a little bit of a log jam Perhaps that's where that saying comes from. Anyway, I managed to lay my bike down and walk back to help the gentleman that helped me and he made a much better fist of this log than I did. Good on him. they put that sign on the tree telling us to go under because with my log hopping skill I would have considered just flying over the top of it oh nice downhill more off camber logs to see if I can get across it's important not to rush these things, it's a good idea. Oh, here's someone that can show me how to do it. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. Just as I thought, slippery. Right, sit back, mate. This is how you do it. Yeah, just, yeah, that's it. Perfection. Yes, I remember this bit. I would probably say this was the hardest part of the entire course. Just to stuff with our brain, we've got about nine logs all crisscrossing each other, on and off camber, downhill, just with enough gap in between them to grab your front or your back wheel to wear the hell out of you. Anyway, that's what I discovered with this because I didn't have the ability to fly over the top of them. In fact, I actually didn't see one rider have the ability to fly over the top of them. 
So they would have been tricky for everyone. This was my turn to play Good Samaritan. In fact, I knew the person that was stuck there. That's Sean. I've known him for 20 odd years. The least I could do was step forward and see if I could help him because I knew that I was going to need help as well. Right, so I'll lift it out. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Get onto this log. <laughs> Roll the front over. There's a strap there you can grab at the top. Thank you. So here's another log with a little steep downhill bit. I'm determined not to make the same mistake I made early, so let's hit it and... Oh, Jesus. All right, so I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That actually really hurt my wrists. And while I managed to get the front wheel across, it really wasn't worth it. Because look at it, nice and jammed. This is how you use all your energy trying to lift your bike over when a peg is stuck underneath a log and... Yeah, it was a bit of a disaster, oh, this fuck. log. Just gotta lift it up, the pegs, the pegs, the pegs stuck on the log, that's all. Thank you. I decided to pull off the track and have a little bit of a rest because after trying to drag my bike across that last log, I was knackered. I could see I had a big hill climb ahead of me so I thought, no use getting halfway up the hill and getting stuck so let's just spend 30 seconds a minute having a bit of a think and grabbing our breath before we hit the hill. Hitting that log just before obviously altered the angle of my camera and made it even worse than how it was set up before. So I won't put you through watching my petrol tank for the next 20 minutes. I'll just try and cut it so that you can see the odd reasonable angle. Sean putting on a nice show for the camera. Thank you, Sean. That was, that was very good. nice. I'd give the dismount a 3 out of 10. Though.
So with that, I finished my first lap. I went on to do four more laps, so five in total. Did have a bit of an issue on the second lap. My front brake stopped working, so I pulled into the pits, spent a good 20 minutes trying to bleed the brakes and get them working. My mechanical genius left me and I got them to work but then they proceeded to fade in and out for the next three laps which was less than ideal. What I can say about hard enduro is I love it. The strategy, the technical side, it's not about riding fast. I lost most of my time in the logs so it's log practice for me. At the end of the day, I finished 16th out of 30 plus riders in the bronze category. Considering all the issues I had with my bike and my lack of skill, gotta be happy with that. COVID, you can get stuffed, bring on the next event. Thanks for watching.